To Kill a Mockingbird, Part 2, Chapter 12. Dear Scout, I hope this letter finds you well. I have a new daddy whose picture you will find enclosed. He's a lawyer like Atticus. I'll be staying here in Meridian this summer on account of we are going to build a fishing boat together. I'm awfully sorry not to see you this summer, but just know that I love you, and don't worry, I'll come and get you and marry you as soon as I have enough money. Yours very truly, Dill. The fact that I had a permanent fiancé was little compensation for his absence. I was crushed. Jem was 12. He was difficult to live with, inconsistent, moody. Atticus said I must be patient with him and disturb him as little as possible. After one altercation, when Jem hollered, It's time you start being a girl and acting right! I burst into tears and fled to Calpurnia. Don't you fret much over Mr. Jem. Mr. Jem? Yeah, he's just about Mr. Jem now. He ain't that old. All he needs is somebody to beat him up, and I ain't big enough. As if this were not enough, the state legislature was called into emergency session, and Atticus left us for two weeks. How'd you and Mr. Jem like to come with, to church with me tomorrow? Really? How about it? It's like we're going to Mardi Gras. What's all this for, Cal? I don't want anybody saying I don't look after my children. First purchase African M.E. Church was in the quarters outside the southern town limits, across from across the old sawmill tracks. It was the only church in Maycomb with a steeple and bell, called First Purchase because it was paid for from the first earnings of freed slaves. Negroes worshipped in it on Sundays, and white men gambled in it on weekends. What you up to, Miss Cal? What you want, Lula? I wants to know why you bring a white chill into an N-word church. There's my company. I thought her voice strange. She spoke quietly, contemptuously. Yeah, and I reckon you's company at the Finch House during the week. Don't you fret. Stop right there, N-word. They got their church and we got ourn. It is our church, ain't it, Miss Cal? It's the same God, ain't it? Let's go home, Cal. They don't want us here. Now, Mr. Jem, I'm mighty glad you have all to have you all here. Don't you pay no attention to Lula. She's a troublemaker from way back, got fancy ideas and haughty ways. I've got our collection money, Cal. You keep it. You're my company. Cal, where are the hymn books? We don't have any. Well, how? Shh. Brethren and sisters, we are particularly glad to have company with us this morning. Mr. and Miss Finch, you all know their father. You all know of t Brother Tom Robinson's trouble. He has been a faithful member of First Purchase since he was a boy. The collection taken up today and for the next three Sundays will go to Helen, his wife, to keep her out, keep her at out at home, help her out at home. That's the Tom Atticus. To, shh. Will the music superintendent lead us in the first hymn? We'll sing number two seventy three. There's a land beyond the mountain. <clears throat> Lord, bless the sick and the suffering. 
The Reverend Sykes' sermon was a procedure no different from our church practice, a forthright denunciation of sin, a warning against the evils of heady brews, gambling, and strange women. Again, I was confronted with the impurity of women doctrine that seemed to preoccupy all clergymen. On closing his sermon, he stood beside a table in front of the pulpit and requested the morning offering. This is not enough. We must have ten dollars. You all know what it's for. Helen can't leave those children to work while Tom's in jail. Alec, shut the doors. Nobody leaves here till we have ten dollars. I want all of you with no children to make a sacrifice and give one more dime apiece. Then we'll have it. Nah, no, Scout, we can put ours in. Give me your dime, Scout. We were especially glad to have you all here. Why are you taking up a collection for Tom Robinson's wife? Didn't you hear why? Helen's got three little ones and she can't go out to work. Why can't you take them with her, Reverend? To tell you the truth, Miss Jean Louise, Helen's finding it hard to find work these days. Why, thank you for letting us come, Reverend. Cal, I know Tom Robinson is in jail and he's done something awful, but why won't folks hire Helen? It's because of what folks say Tom's done. Folks aren't anxious to, to have anything to do with any of his family. Just what did he do, Cal? Old Mr. Bob Yule accused him of raping his girl and had him arrested and put in jail. Mr. Yule, does he have anything to do with those Yules that come to every first day of school and then go home? Why, Atticus said they were absolute trash. Yeah, those are the ones. What's rape, Cal? It's something you'll have to ask Mr. Finch about. Are you all hungry? The Reverend took a long time unwinding this morning. He's not usually so tedious. He's just like our preacher. But why do y'all sing hymns that way? Looks like they could ha say have. Bleh, looks like they could save the collection money for a year and get some hymn books. Why wouldn't do any good? They can't read. Can't read all those folks. That's right. Can't put four folks in first purchase read. Now I'm one of them. Where'd you go to school, Cal? Nowhere. Let's see now. Who taught me my letters? It was Miss Marty Atkins's old Aunt Miss Buford. Are you that old? I'm older than Mr. Finch, even. Not sure by how much, though. We started remembering one time, trying to figure out how old I was. I can remember ju back just a few years more than he can. What's your birthday, Cal? I just have it on Christmas. But, Cal, you don't even look near as old as Atticus. Call folks don't show their age so fast. Cal, did you teach Zebo to read? Yes, Mr. Jim. I made him get a page of the Bible every day. Cal, can I come see you sometimes? See me, honey. You see me every day. Out, by, out to your house. Sometimes after work, Atticus can get me. Anytime you want to, we'd be glad to have you. Look, yon, look on the porch yonder. Enamored upright, uncompromising, Aunt Alexandra was sitting exactly as if she had sat there every day of her life. 